Join me, Jake Turner, for this special audio cast as I talk with corn and soybean experts from all over about best practices in pest control, ag issues, and how growers can get more from every acre. All it takes is a minute. In this audio cast of The Minute, I'm in San Antonio, Texas at the Commodity Classic. I'm lucky to get a few minutes with Gail Stratman, FMC technical sales lead, to get some great tips on tank mixing. I know I'd benefit from a refresher course. I hope growers will too. Gail, spring applications are just around the corner. What should growers do beforehand to make sure their equipment's ready? One of the biggest things you want to remember is just we want to start with a clean sprayer. We want to make sure that all the winterizing additives that you put in there last year, whether that's uh, RV antifreeze, which is common. Some people use old motor oil that can be common. Make sure that's all cleaned out of there. And I mean completely cleaned out. Just Don't just try to flush it out with water because sometimes that won't uh, get it all out. Um, maybe you didn't get the sprayer all cleaned out last year before you put it away. And so just flushing some water through there this spring may not get that all out of there. Make sure you check the, all the screens, the sumps, um, the lines, because as you start working the spring, start putting products in there, um, they may dissolve some of those products or just moving through the field and stuff may jar stuff loose. And so then we've got things floating in there and starting to clog up screens. So make sure you do a thorough checkup on that sprayer system or on your planter if you're going to be applying, you know, at planter and furrow insecticides and that sort of thing, fertilizers. Make sure that's all clean and ready to go so that you don't have issues getting started up because I know it's so critical for growers to get into fields in a timely manner. And the last thing you want is downtime when you're when it's so critical to get across to acres. So even when we're talking about equipment, it's start clean, stay clean. It's start clean, stay clean. It's a good motto to use for a lot of different uh, things in agriculture, whether you're talking about weed control, whether you're talking about insect control, whether you're talking about sprayer clean out, equipment clean up. If you start clean, you know where you've got a good starting point. You can go from there and, and make it really work. There's so many options for crop protection products. What are some basic steps when tank mixing a product? Well, there's a good mixing order that you should always remember. Um, there's acronyms that have been developed over the last 30 years um, that work well when tank mixing or putting products together. The acronyms generally used in the industry are, are they call whale or dale. Whale, W-A-L-E or D-A-L-E. And basically they stand for, uh, with dale, dry and then agitate, liquids, and then emulsifiers are extra. Whale is very similar. Wettable powders or wettable DGs agitate liquid and emulsifiers are extras. And it's a good order to remember. Typically, the dry products are gonna be the hardest to get into solution because you have to dissolve these things into water. So you wanna to try to make sure that those get dissolved first. So you start with the hardest to dissolve products first, which is the dries. You agitate them very well, make sure they're mixed very well. Then you go to the next thing, which typically is your liquids, your, your, your flowable products, um, your suspension concentrates, those kind of formulations that you need to have agitated. And then finally, you finish with the extras. That's um, the EC products, uh, the uh, em, you know, emulsifiable concentrates, the extras, the crop oil concentrates, all the adjuvants. They typically go in last. So you've kind of got a, an order there. Now, of course, there's always exceptions to these. But... You know, you typically you want to uh, follow that order and generally for 90% of the situations that that order works really well. What can you tell me about using fertilizer or fertilizer blends as the carrier? Fertilizers add another level of complication to this. Growers want to use fertilizers as their carrier instead of water. And a lot of times fertilizers are suspensions themselves. So they've already got products suspended in them, whether that's you know, nutrients and, and other micronutrient packages. So then what happens is, is we want to put herbicides and insecticides into that. And a lot of times those formulations may or may not be compatible with those fertilizer formulations. And so we need to ensure that the products we're putting in there aren't going to either separate or want to float because there's different densities. So sometimes we, they, they just want to go to the top and then we don't get an even concentration. So fertilizers add another level of complexity into this, whether it's uh, simple you know, urea or nitrogen formulations, or we've got some of the starter fertilizers, which are more dense, that can be really difficult. So we need to do some, some more testing up front or checking up front to make sure all these things are going to fit together in a tank so that we don't go out and just assume that this is all going to work, load up a big load, 
find out these things aren't going together. And then we've got a mess out there that we've got to deal with because one, we can't use that. We're not going to get our products on right. And two, a lot of times we've got something in a tank now that's not compatible and, and is a big mess in our equipment. What's a relatively simple way that a grower can run a test like that? Biggest thing growers want to start with is a jar compatibility test. Um, it's basically taking the products and the ratios um, that you want to mix up and doing it in a small sample in, a, in what we call a jar test. Take a clear jar, clean, take uh, the care you want, whether that's water or fertilizer, and then start adding the products you want to it in order, whether that's dry products that you want to slurry first in water and then put into the fertilizer and add things after that. So you want to do that jar compatibility test to make sure all of these things are going to go together. The other thing you want to, of course, follow is, is the label. Make sure you check the label on all the products you want to put together because a lot of times there will be directions on there about what products you can put together, what products you probably avoid putting into those mixes. So that's probably the first place to check. Do a jar compatibility test, see how they all go together. Leave them sit for a while to make sure there's not separation issues over time. And generally that'll give you a really good picture of whether or not the mix you're wanting to put out is a good idea or not. Are there any other tips you can give us to avoid issues when mixing products? Well, there's, there's issues with all sorts of things. Uh, one that's really important is use a good water source. Um, water source can come from a lot of different areas. We've got well water and well water can vary a lot across the country, whether or not we got areas of the country with really hard water. Some areas have a lot of iron and minerals in the water. Some people use surface water that may come out of a, a creek or a, a stream or a stock dam or a river, and you can have a lot of sediment and sand in that. And so that can cause problems because products want to adhere to it and settle out. So make sure you're using a good, clean water source. Um, make sure your, your dry products are dissolving and mixing in there. If you've got trace amounts of fertilizer or other things in that water and you put a dry product in there, that can affect the speed and the amount of dissolvability of your product. Um, you get fertilizer in there and you throw uh, something in there and it takes twice as long to dissolve and you don't realize that, you start adding other products to it before that dry product is dissolved and now you're creating something that maybe wants to settle to the bottom. We had hot spots in a field uh, because we're getting too much product out there because it wasn't fully dissolved in solution. So make sure those dry products are, are dissolving. What about water temperature? Water temperature is another one. Fertilizer temperature is another one. Early, time in, early in the spring, can be an issue when things are really cold because cold uh, basically slows down the reaction time of a lot of things. So we need to be cognizant of how cold our, our water is coming out. It's just, it's gonna take more time when we're dealing with water temperatures down in the 40s versus we get later in the spring, we get out there and the water temperatures in the 60s and things seem to go to a lot better. So we've got all, all, all sorts of chemical reactions going on here and, and we just need to be cognizant that temperature is a critical factor in all this stuff mixing together. Well, what other tools besides the jar test do we have to make sure our products are compatible and can mix properly? There's a lot of technical bulletins out there put out by universities that kind of um, go through some of the proper steps in mixing things. But one of the key things you really want to look at is look at the label for all of the products that you're trying to mix together because there's a lot of information on those labels that will tell you do these products or should these products go together, what is compatible and what isn't. So that's probably the first place to start. And then from there you work to your jar test to make sure that the products I'm putting together and the ratios that I want are going to be compatible with the situation that I'm trying to apply them in. Well, Gail, thank you so much. I always learn a lot when we get together and I'm sure our listeners do too. That's it for this audio cast on the minute from the Commodity Classic, where Gail Stratman reminded us that taking the time to do a jar test early and make sure our ingredients are compatible can save you a lot of time when it comes to application. This is Jake Turner reminding you to be safe out there and I'll see you down the road when you have a minute.